Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft Project. What we're going to look at in this module is how to resolve over allocation of resources. We're also going to look at how to create a resource pool. But first off, over allocated resources. So at the moment I don't have any over allocations, but I'm just going to create one. So I'm going to assign Anne onto this task there. Now she is now over allocated, as you can see by the two red men there and I want to try and fix this. So if I just close that, what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to give an overtime. Now I need to split this screen down so I can do this. So I'm going to click on details and then select resource usage and then that will show me, um, there I've got Anne, which is red, 16 hours in one day. Now if I insert the overtime time column, over time work column, I can simply put eight hours in that overtime column and now she's able to do that work. She is no longer over allocated. Now if I remove that split and take Anne off that task, back to resources, assign resources, just remove Anne back off that task, close that box, um, put that back to one day, just get everything back as it was. The other, th the other thing I could have done was use a, a tool that's on the resource tab in project which is called leveling. Now on the right hand side of the resource tab you have leveling options where you can level automatic or manual and by day by day or minute by minute depending on what your project plan is. Now. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to allocate Anne to this task to make her over allocated. So she's over allocated, but this time I'm not going to give her any over, over time. I'm going to get the computer to level. I could do it by resource, but I'm just going to go level all. And then the computer moves the tasks to the next available space. And that may be okay, but also it may not be okay. So you may look at that and think, actually, she can't do that then. But that, in this example, you can see that that's just moved forward one day, but that may have gone off the screen. So you, there is a, a Gantt chart view that you could select that will help you identify where um, tasks have moved to. So it's in other views and then more views, and it is called leveling Gantt. So I'm just going to select that and apply. So that what that shows us, it's not very clear on this example, but basically the khaki colored icon is where it was and the blue icon is where it's moved to and you can see there's a little arrow there where it's showing if I can just point to that slack so it's moved one, one day forward once you've identified that you can see um, you can put it back to the normal Gantt chart before I do that though, I'll just point out there it says one elapsed day there so you can see which one's moved and obviously that's because it's all linked together. You've got a cascading movement on the rest of these tasks. So I'll put that back to the normal Gantt chart. So we're back as we were. So that's using leveling and that was manual leveling. Now there is a tool in there that's called automatic leveling, which I'm just going to show you how that works. Because the problem with manual leveling, everything can move at once. Um, and you might not like that. So like a scattergun effect across this Gantt chart. So now I've removed Anne from that second task. I'm going to change the options in leveling to automatic. And what's going to happen now is, as soon as I assign Anne to that second task, if I just move this out of the way so you can see, when I assign Anne, it moves straight away. It didn't give me the option and I didn't have to manually level. And again, um, that could have gone off the screen. The benefit of having an automatic is that as soon as you add somebody and that makes them over allocated, it automatically moves. So that would be a stopper maybe for you. You would see that and say, whoa, hang on. And then you would remove her and maybe allocate somebody else. So it's basically up to you what you use. I tend to leave it on manual. Um, this is a process as you're adding resources. I didn't used to like automatic, but I've grown into it now. So it's up to you though, it's a personal choice. So that's um, resource leveling. Now what I want to do is show you how 
to use or create a resource pool. So I'm just going to close this file down for a second. I got myself a new one. To create a resource pool, you don't actually create any tasks. You just go straight down to the resource sheet and create your resources. So I'm just going to go Ben and Bill. There's my two resources. And I'm going to save this file as pool. Just call it pool. Like that. No, not pool. Pool. Save that. And then create a new file. And this time I, I am going to have a task, task A, task B, and both of those can be 1J duration, and I'm going to save this as project A, and then I'm going to click on this button and select share resources and use resources from pool. So this file hasn't got any resources, but now if I click OK to that and then go to the resource sheet, you can see that it sucked the resource pool in. Now I'm going to allocate those resources because this next bit is quite cool. So I'm going to get Ben to do the first task and I'm going to get Bill to do the second task. And then I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to do task A and task B. Task A, task B. So both one day. And I'm going to use the resources from the pool. Pull them in from pool. OK. And then I'm going to allocate those resources. So sign resources. I'm going to sign bill. As soon as I do that, look. He goes red. Now, if I sit on the icon, the project icon, you can see in the pool they're both red, project A they're both red, and the project which I haven't named yet, they're also both red. So when you're using a pool, as soon as these people are over allocated, they will flag red. The downside to a pool is that somebody will have to manage the resources within the pool and decide whether project A or this project 3 can have that resource. So that's usually a task that somebody will have to manage. But basically, Project Pool is a great tool if you've got the same resources that you use all the time for all your projects. As long as somebody manages it, it's, it's, it's fine. So that's the end of this little phase. Next phase, we will be looking at saving a baseline.